Do you own a fan but forgot to turn it on before you got on your cycle trainer? Or maybe you set your fan way too high and it's like a hurricane. Or maybe you tried to adjust your fan with a broomstick? That didn't work very well now, did it? Maybe you need a smarter fan controller. Something that can be proportional to your power, speed, or heart rate. That's a much better solution now, isn't it? The Maelstrom Fan Controller. Works with most household fans for your cycling needs. If you're anything like me, then it usually takes you a little bit of time to get stuff gathered together to get on your bike trainer. Things like finding your gloves and your shoes or filling your water bottle and making sure that everything is functioning correctly. And if anything, anything goes wrong, if you can't find something or your sensors don't connect, you'll find that you've wasted maybe 30 minutes at this. You get on your bike trainer, you're a few minutes into your ride and you realize, wah, wah, fan's not on. And now you're sitting there having to realize that you have to get off the bike trainer, go across the room, turn on the thing, come back and get back on the bike. Not a big deal, but it's a little bit of an annoyance. And it's just one more thing. And these are simple problems. These are problems that we should have solved a long time ago, just from a convenience standpoint. I mean, if you're anything like me, you went out and you researched all the trainers out there and you found the best deal that you possibly could for the best trainer that you possibly could that met your requirements. And then you just grabbed whatever fan you had lying around the house or what, whatever was on sale. And that's how most of us do it. First, I'm going to talk about what the Maelstrom fan controller is and how I'm using lean startup methodologies to test and validate the market. Uh, if you're more interested in the technical workings of it, you can jump ahead to the time on your screen now. So what is the Maelstrom fan controller? Not this one. I mean this one. This one actually works. And I've been using it for several weeks under a regime of build, use, test, refine, and so forth with just a few fans that I've had around the house. So I think that there's this neat little problem about forgetting or adjusting your fan while on your bike trainer. There is already a product in the market right now, and there are numerous remote control fans that you can adjust just by a IR remote. So I did the opposite of what Kickstarters everywhere seem to be doing, and I built a functional prototype. Instead of investing a lot of money into marketing and PR, I invested my time and efforts into developing a prototype that I can use, test, and refine. However, I'm at a crossroads right now with, is it cool enough? Is there a market to support this? So with the Lean Startup methodology, I've launched a website and I'm putting out some Google ads to see if there is market traction. And if there is, I'm going to continue and design that circuit board and look at the certifications required and move it ahead as a product. So with any of these ideas, just like on any Kickstarter, failure is possible. And I'm not afraid of failure. Oh God, I failed! Okay. So maybe I am a little bit afraid of failure, but that's okay. Because with the open source community, it means that even if there is insufficient traction to get the product ahead, then I can just open source it and those who are interested can then look and build upon my work up until that point. If you think the Maelstrom fan controller is a neat idea and you want a little inline device that allows you to control your existing fan from any of your uh, power, speed, or heart rate sensors, head on over to the website and on the pre-order page, just drop in your email address. And with enough traction, I'll move ahead with the project. And if you want to stick around now, uh, here's an explanation on how it works from an electrical perspective, which I thought was really fascinating. So the basics of this can be found in just a standard dimmer switch. And the standard dimmer switch is made up of a resistor, variable resistor, capacitor, diac, and a triac. Essentially, as you adjust this, it's adjusting the trigger level for the DIAC. It's adjusting the voltage the DIAC will eventually see. So once the voltage crosses this, for, for here, crosses this level, it will trigger the triac. So we have an AC waveform coming in. This is our level that is set that can move up and down, or move out and in, because it works in both directions. And once we hit that point, 
it will cause the track to conduct. So we get zero volt, zero volt, zero volt, and then boom, wherever the track level is. It could be 50, it could be 80, it could be 100. Um, and it's not really something that's equivalent to PWM or equivalent to um, uh, proportional voltage control. What it is, is it's kind of like pulsing something on for a little bit and then off. And how much you pulse it on and off determines how much power is getting through. So we can replace this lamp with what's called a shaded pole motor. And a shaded pole motor is a very simple AC motor that's commonly found on household fans. If you have a kind of large clunky knob with multiple position settings that feels like it's switching the AC input, that will likely be compatible. And what we do then is we replace this light with our motor and we replace the triggering circuit with a microcontroller. So I replaced almost everything except for the triac with a microcontroller and a few other supplementary electronics. This arrangement is a bridge rectifier. It converts this AC waveform into kind of pulsed DC. This arrangement essentially causes uh, a diode to conduct with a transistor um, every time it's near the zero cross. So every time it hits zero, we get a short little pulse that says, okay, this is a zero crossing. Why that's important is because we need to trigger the triac relative to the zero crossing. So that goes into the microcontroller. We receive our AMP plus, potentially BLE signal, and uh, calculate, all right, based on this amount of power, how long do we want to wait? So that's a little algorithmic, but uh, it just depends on the fan and what the user wants set. So when we pulse, it causes it to conduct and it causes the voltage to jump and the rest of the waveform conducts until it gets to the end. Uh, when we get another pulse, it won't conduct again until we send our pulse. So we are getting pulses in that says zero cross, zero cross, zero cross, and we're sending pulses out that says now conduct, now conduct. And the closer to the zero cross, the more power that we are going to be um, sending to the device. And for a shaded pole, that essentially translates into the closer to the zero cross, the faster the fan will go. The further away, the slower the fan will go. And there are some limits based on each fan and the bearings and all sorts of things, but there is a pretty common range that I found for most fans. All right, so on this Nordic development board, these are the only parts that are actually important. Everything else is just supporting electronics. And these devices are actually available in a much, much smaller package or a module such as this one here. Uh, if anyone wants to try and guess what this board is here, drop a comment. Um, but it's, uh, it's for another ongoing project. So the other thing that I'm using for prototyping is this fairly cheap um, AC dimmer module, which contains the exact circuit that I've drawn on the board. So the AC comes into this device. It goes through the bridge rectifier, goes through the opto-isolating uh, trigger for the zero cross. Our signal comes out through an opto-isolating triac triggering module and into a triac and allows it to conduct the load. So it's a very, very simple arrangement, but it's quite effective. As we start cycling, I'm going to speed up a little bit. And I'm only cycling lightly right now. But if we go up, it speeds up. And if we go back lightly, slows down. The response is damped, so it takes a little while to speed up. A little while to settle down and stop. 